What are you looking at, little buddy? Oh, there's deer over there. Oh, yeah, there's deer over there. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. I'll have to send him a signal. No, no. There you come. Come on, come back. Come back. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but a little herd of deer just came down in the meadow. We are walking along the edge of Enterprise Reservoir. This is a true Border One dark sky area and over 6,000 feet in elevation. Perfect conditions to go after galaxies. And tonight we're going after the galaxy M51, a true grand design spiral galaxy, a spectacular galaxy. Face on, we can see it face on so that we can see those beautiful arms coming out of the center, the full structure of it. It's called M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, but there's something going on with the Whirlpool Galaxy besides just its beautiful spiraling arms. The fish are starting to jump. I do have a fishing license and I do have a fishing pole. We'll see how tonight goes, but it's tempting. So M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, is approximately 27 million light years from Earth. It is approximately 60% the size of the Milky Way. Our Milky Way has approximately a half a trillion stars, a mere half a trillion stars, and M51 has about 60% of that, around 300 billion stars. But M51 has something the Milky Way doesn't, and that is a little dwarf galaxy, and is tugging, the two are gravitationally tugging on each other, and there's literally a filament of gases and space dust that bridges the two giving it the most unusual appearance, the grand spiral galaxy of M51, and then a tail of a dwarf galaxy that's connected with this, this filament of gases and, and space dust. Oh, please tell me that Shadow didn't run all the way over there. Oh, did he? Oh my gosh, he's 247 yards away. He did. Let me send signals. He's chasing those deer. Here he comes. Oh, he did. He chased the deer right off the meadow. I can see him coming. 169 yards, 150 yards. Come on. Oh, look at him go. He's, he's coming across where he's going to have to swim to get to me. You're coming direct as the crow flies, but you gotta, you gotta find a bridge, little buddy. Come on. Well, he'll figure it out. Look at the fish jumping right there. Well, sorry about that distraction. Where was I? M51 and the little dwarf galaxy. They're gravitationally interacting, leaving a, a really cool, unusual looking pair of galaxies. We're gonna set up, oh, look at him, he's swimming. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm gonna have to dry him off to sleep in the camper tonight. We're gonna to set up right on top of this hill. We have brought the big 10 inch Dobsonian telescope. It's a fantastic telescope for galaxies. It's a big light bucket, capable of reaching deep into space, or really I should say capable of of capturing those faint photons that come in one by one from millions and millions of light years away. Shadow buddy, am I gonna have to show you how to get back over here? <laughs> Let me save this dog. Oh, there he goes, he's figured it out. What a nut. Ah, he's figured out, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Good boy, 
Good boy. Come on. Go all the way around. There you go. There you go. There you go. You were naughty. You were naughty, naughty, naughty. Oh, don't you dare jump on me. You're a muddy, dirty, wet mess. <sighs> Why? Why does he do these things? <laughs> All right. We're going to go up and we're going to set up next to the camper. See the camper right over there? I just met them for the first time tonight, but they have a 20 inch Dobsonian. They're going to be doing visual astronomy tonight. So we'll go over and check that out later. I was talking to him, hopefully he'll let us film it. It should be interesting. We're gonna have a little campfire right there. So I'm gonna set up the telescope right here and there's that muddy dog beautiful sunset water's a little low for this time of year we're having a drought all right we're gonna get setting up well we got a roaring fire going tonight and I'm telling you, it's fitting for what's happening because we're getting a roaring, beautiful, bright picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy. We're going to go over and take a look at it. Before I do that, though, i got to tell you that just about 100 yards away is a man camping with a 20-inch Dobsonian. That is a massive telescope. And the eyepiece is at the top. You literally have to climb a ladder up to look through the eyepiece. He's doing visual astronomy as opposed to astrophotography. And I have never experienced visual astronomy like what I have seen through his Dobsonian. The very whirlpool galaxy that we are imaging right now, you can see clearly with the naked eye. Of course, not the detail that I am getting, but you can see the, the, the grand spiral arms. You can see the small dwarf galaxy. I mean, you can see it. I was blown away. So he's going to let me film it in the morning. It's too dark right now. You can't see it, but we'll film it in the morning. But let's go over for now and take a look and see what's going on with our image. I'm keeping the light off. I will show you what I'm imaging with in the morning as well. Let me close out this window and voila. What do you think? The final image will be much better than this because this is a GoPro imaging a computer monitor. But look at those beautiful grand spiral arms coming out, two of them. There's the center and there's two coming out. And then there's the smaller dwarf galaxy that's interacting with it gravitationally. And they're literally connected by a filament of space dust and gases from that one arm. It's like wrapping around to it. That is so cool. 27 million light years from Earth. But that is the Whirlpool Galaxy. Dang, that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's go back. We're going to let the rig do its thing. Okay, well, we'll pick this up in the morning. Well, I got here a little too late. It's about 8.30 in the morning. And Elliot, do you mind just saying hi to the audience? Hi. <laughs> you missed a nice evening, I'll tell you. A nice, clear, beautiful night. It was a nice, clear, beautiful night. And Elliot has already put this away, but... I'm just going to describe this. In this box at the bottom is a 20 inch diameter mirror. That is a huge mirror. That's twice the size of the mirror in my 
telescope that I'm going to show you here in a minute. And then this is kind of like a genie box. You take that lid off and it literally just comes out and it goes up about eight feet. So the eyepiece is the very top. So you have to have a ladder to crawl up to look through the eyepiece. But the light comes into the telescope, hits that primary mirror, bounces all the way up, hits a secondary mirror at an angle that reflects it into the eyepiece. Flock of duck right there. That's fun to watch. That's fun to watch. Okay, I'm going to show you what we were imaging with last night. We get on this side of the sun. So, as I mentioned, that Dobsonian telescope that Elliot was using, and that has the primary mirror at the bottom, and then clear at the top is the secondary mirror. But this is the same thing, only it has an aluminum tube encasing it all. Primary mirror at the bottom, secondary mirror at the top, you can see that secondary mirror right there. It's at an angle and it reflects the light right into, it would be an eyepiece if you were gonna be looking visually, but instead it is a, a camera, dedicated to astrophotography camera. And so this is a big scope. This is a really big scope. Imagine, that's a 10 inch diameter mirror, imagine a 20 inch diameter mirror, and eight feet long. So <laughs> that's what uh, Elliot was uh, looking at. And we could literally see things with the naked eye that I've never seen before with the naked eye. It's incredible. All right, so we're going to hang around here a little bit longer, and then we're going to uh, pack up, but I'm also you see, through that V, that canyon, straight ahead, there's unusual cliff formations. That is all volcanic tuff. Tuff is a rock that when a volcano shoots out ash and it piles, and it can pile, I mean, it can pile like miles deep and then it begins to compress and over the many years it compresses down and it get, forms a rock called tuff and then wind and water erodes it and so it, it leaves really cool formations. I'm going to fly my drone through there. I'm going to fly my drone through there and see what kind of footage I can get. So I'm going to show that footage if I get it. I will show it when I get, go home and we'll process this image. And I'll show you the final image. I think it's going to be spectacular. And as always, we have fun having you come along with us and hope you join us on future Adventures of Shadow.